Alright Cherubs, right now I'm holding in my hands one of the most beautiful and certainly one of the most influential pieces of artwork ever created. The Elements by Euclid. Euclid wrote this in the 4th century BC in Alexandria. I know it's possible none of this is original work. He was able to organize and structure the arguments of past artists in an original and enduring way. It's not just any work of art. It's a collection of the creative, logical, and altogether inspiring ideas that have helped change the world on more than one occasion. Euclid's masterpiece inspired other thinkers in Alexandria in his own time period. It inspired architects in the Roman Empire. It inspired astronomers during the Golden Age of Islam in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. In the 12th century, an English monk even disguised himself as a Muslim in order to sneak a copy of this out of the translation center in Cordoba. Abraham Lincoln kept a copy of this at his bedside in order to keep his mind sharp, and he often used its techniques in order to conquer his opponents in arguments. Einstein was introduced to the creativity represented here when he was just 12 years old. The 20th century artist Bertrand Russell once said that being introduced to this at the age of 11 was one of the great moments in his life, and he went on to compare it to being in love for the first time. The story of this work impacting people has no end. It has never failed to impact the culture that it enters. And it's often been said that no work in the Western world has been more influential than Euclid's elements other than the Bible itself. And with good reason. Every page of this is a work of art. Euclid, like many artists, starts with simple materials. Michelangelo started with a block of marble, a chisel, and a hammer. Euclid starts with a couple points and a line connecting them. A line that extends past those two points. A circle drawn around a line segment that becomes the circle's radius and congruent right angles. From there, he could work magic and create masterpiece after masterpiece. Jackson Pollock paintings are often called things like number five. Euclid's masterpieces are similar to that, except we call them propositions. So let's take a look at proposition number 12, which teaches any artist how to create a perfectly perpendicular straight line. Now I don't mean a line that looks perpendicular, I mean a line that is perpendicular, or at least as close as we can get in the physical world. And the process is going to illuminate what the idea of a perpendicular line is. Let's start with a line segment and draw two points, A and B, and take a random point above that line segment and call it C. Now we want to take C and draw a line straight down in a way that is perpendicular to line AB. To do this, Euclid instructs us to pick a point at random below line segment AB and call it D. Then, using his third postulate, draw a circle with radius CD. That circle will intersect AB at points E and G. Now if we could perfectly bisect line segment EG, we would know point H. By connecting C and this hypothetical point H, we would have a perpendicular line. To do that, we need to construct an equilateral triangle using E and G, creating point K. We know that this triangle is equilateral because of an earlier masterpiece by Euclid, Proposition 1. See? Now we need to bisect angle GKE, which we can do using Euclid's Proposition 10. And that requires Proposition 9, which requires Proposition 3. And Proposition 3 references Proposition 2. And they all require those original postulates. Now that line segment GE has been bisected, we can connect C and H to create a perfectly perpendicular line. And crap, that's beautiful. Holy crap, that's beautiful. See how Euclid arrives at truth and beauty through these perfectly structured lines of reasoning? That's the inspiration those other mathematicians have found in this work, and that's how I just drew a perpendicular line. You mean artists. What? You said mathematicians found inspiration, but you meant to say artists, right? Same thing.